Hey there. Um, so what I'd like to do is take you through how I use sample CD-ROMs with my Akai S3000 XL sampler. I can confirm this works for the S3000 XL, it works for the CD3000 XL. It may work for some of the older ones as well, I'm just not sure, never used it myself. If you're not familiar with a sample CD-ROM, it's really uh, what predated today's sample pack. Um, so before, instead of having this all on your computer or online, uh, you would actually have these physical CD-ROMs, or before that, floppy disks uh, that contain samples, and then those samples would get uh, collected into programs, which is kind of like a preset. Um, so there's a lot of these available online. I'm not really going to go too much into that, um, but pretty sure you can probably find them. Um, you can also buy the hard versions of them if you like. So this really started out for me with wanting to be able to use all of these sample CDs because there's a lot of really good stuff out there from uh, you know the 90s and 2000s. And so I bought myself a CD 3000 Excel and that actually has a built-in um, CD-ROM drive. So basically would uh, take one of these sample CDs and plug it into the CD-ROM drive. Now you've got this uh, all these samples and programs loaded into your sampler. And that was great for a while, but it really just meant that you only got one uh, CD at a time. So a little bit of a slower process there, workflow. And with some additional research, what I realized is that there's this thing called a SCSI 2SD, and you could use that instead of floppy disk player, um, which pretty much any hardware sampler of that era has and essentially what you could do is then instead of just having one sample CD you could put up to seven on an SD card put that into your SCSI to SD drive and then all of a sudden you've got the equivalent of seven CD-ROMs all loaded into your sampler at once which is pretty cool. I set up my SCSI to SD drive but I have to say it was not super intuitive from that point going forward uh, there is some information online. There are some videos, specifically uh, Paul Cunningham's were very helpful to me, but I still could not figure out how to get multiple CDs onto a single SD. Really, I could only, using that uh, that guide, figure out how to get one CD onto one SD drive, which you know kind of defeats the purpose because you're just back to uh, you know the equivalent of a, of a physical CD. So you today is, is how that you can take those um, ISO or ISO files, which is basically like the equivalent of uh, the physical CD-ROM, but it's mounted on your desktop. So how you can take those and load up to seven of those onto an SD card and then use those um, with your S3000 Excel uh, or potentially other samplers. So let's take a look. I'll start by formatting my SD card just because I have... Um, used it for a few things in the past, so I just want to start fresh here. All right, and with that being done, now I can switch over to the S3000. The first thing you're going to need is a micro USB cable. I'm going to plug that into my SCSI to SD drive. Note that uh, the sampler is off here. And then here's my formatted SD card. I formatted this with a card reader before, by the way, so it was not plugged into the sampler, but now it's going in. All right, and back to the computer. I'm going to use the SCSI to SD utility to partition that SD card into seven different portions. So each of those will hold a different CD. And this utility you can just find online if you Google it. It's made to be used with the SCSI to SD drive. And just verify that it's seeing the drive there. You should have that USB cable plugged into your computer. And it should show up there. And so what I did here is I just loaded the default settings. And basically there's only one SCSI ID setup, so now I'm just going through one by one. And I'm setting them up each as a hard drive, each with two gigabytes of space. Uh, checking that auto box on each one, that's going to automatically um, set the start and end uh, of that sector where the data is going to be stored. 
and I'm just numbering them sequentially here so you can just follow what I'm doing. Um, and you can do fewer if you want, but I'm just going to do all seven. And then just to test it, so I, I save it first to the card, so it should be written now, but then to test it, I load the defaults again, and then I load what was on the card that I saved, and just make sure that it looks like it did a second ago, so that looks good. All right, next up, I need to use the Windows Disk Management Tool. You can find that if you right-click the uh, Windows button there in your taskbar. And what this will let me do is it's going to let me set up each of the individual drives that I just created on that SD card. Um, so when you open this up, you'll see if you did this right and you do seven of them, you should see seven different disks here, each one two gigabytes. Now just make sure you don't write over your C drive. That would be very bad. Um, but if, if you just grab one of these two gigabyte ones, um, you should be fine. So I'm right clicking on that and then I'm doing a new single volume and basically just clicking through here. But one thing you want to make sure you don't do is that you don't reformat this. So go up to do not format this volume. And then Windows assigns a letter to it. So that's how I'm going to identify it and find it later. I'm just going to do this for the first three. You'd need to do this for all seven if you created seven SCSI IDs. Yep, so E, F, and G, that's what we'll look for when we write the sample CDs on. Uh, now here's another app you got to get. It's called Win32 Disk Imager. It's free. But what this is going to let me do is write that ISO file, or actually an IMG file, uh, onto each of those drives. So I've got a folder here. It's just some ISO files. Each one's a different um, sample CD. These are from the, um, the Akai uh, sound library. I think there's eight disks in total. And I'm going to put the first one on first here. And you'll see they're ISO extensions, so I have to actually just change this to an IMG or else it won't work with the, the Win32 disk imager. Literally just changing it, and that's all you need to do. And I'll just do it for the first three here, just to illustrate the point, but um, ignore that, we'll look at that later. Cool. So now we can actually write that first Akai sample CD uh, to the SD card to drive E as it's been named by Windows. Um, so in the background, I'm just selecting that first um, image file. And I'm confirming I'm going to write it to E. And then just click write. And just as a reminder here, so my USB cable is connected from my S3000 to my laptop here, and I do not have the sampler turned on. It doesn't need to be on. And I just skipped ahead there because that takes a couple minutes to write, but you get the idea. Cool, so that looked like it worked. I'm going to write the other two just um, so we can look through all of them once we actually switch back to the, uh, the Akai. So here I'm going to write to that next um, partition, which has been named F, and this is Sound Library Volume 2.
All right, and skipping ahead. Uh, these really don't take that long to write, just a couple minutes, but no sense in sitting here watching it load. And then I'll write the third one to G. And just to reiterate, these are just identical two gigabyte partitions on that SD drive that we created. Um, first by using that SCSI uh, utility and then with the disk management uh, utility in Windows. Never had to do any formatting on the Akai. If you want to use these as an actual hard drive and, and save um, samples to them from within the Akai, I would do a format in there, which I can show you in another video, but um, to use the sample CDs, you actually don't need to do any formatting in there. You can just do this all on the computer, which is kind of nice. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do here before we um, look at the Akai is I'm gonna change these back to ISOs. Um, first of all, so it doesn't trip me up in the future, but um, second of all, I'm gonna show you one more tool I like to use, it's called CD Extract. Uh, you can get a free version of this. I'm running the free version here. And what this lets you do is it lets you open an ISO file on your computer. So I can actually see the contact contents of one of these disk images. So I just opened up the first one here and you'll be able to see the different um, partitions You'll be able to see the different programs that are in each one. And then at kind of the bottom of the screen there, you can see the samples themselves. And you can actually, if you click through those, you can play the samples in here just to get a kind of a preview of what's on there. So this is what we're gonna look for um, in the Akai itself, just to make sure that this worked. All right, and let's switch over to the hardware. For the first time in this process, I'm now gonna power on the Akai. And for me, I always get this like error that the, the disk has been removed, so I just hit F7 here to skip that. And then I'm going to hit the load button. And you need to get the proper SCSI drive selected, which is F5. The way that this numbering convention works, uh, at least for me when I do this, is I have to set these both to zero. Uh, to get the equivalent of that first segment or partition on the SD drive. So that'll be CD1. And then to get to the next CD, I have to set them to one and one. A third CD, it's two and two, so on and so forth until you get to six and six. So you're gonna need to change those um, in order to change which CD you're pulling up here when you load. So I hit the load button, boom. There it is, that is the Akai Library Volume 1, and I'm just going through different hard drive partitions here, but it looks like everything wrote correctly. Um, so now if I wanted to, I could just load these samples in and play them, but I'm just going to verify that those other ones, um, those other CDs also look good. So here I load the second one, and looking through the partitions looks good, matches what, uh, what I would have seen if I pulled this up in CD Extract. And then I'll just verify the third one as well on that second SCSI ID. And that is the Akai Sound Library Volume 3. So everything looked good there. And this is great. I mean, just one SD card, I could have seven CDs now. Pretty awesome. I can load whichever ones I want from any mixture of the CDs. I can save those programs um, back onto the hard drive as well. And I'm just going to load up a couple samples here and um, go from there. All right, well, that is it. Uh, hope that helps somebody. Just want to say thanks again to Paul Cunningham for getting me this far. And uh, if you run into any problems or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to help you out and enjoy.